Today I'm going to make a postcard to send to family and friends back home. And this is something that I've done several times already since we've lived uh, abroad. I can show you a couple prints that I used in the past. First one was this mountain and water scene from Hong Kong. And here's another that I did of a boat in the harbor. And this one is actually cut to the postcard size. And since then, I've also carved woodblock prints for a couple of children's books that I've done. And some of these prints have been sent out as postcards also. So I'll show you, first of all, some of the materials that we're going to use. This is called a bench hook. It has a unique shape and it's so you can hook it onto the end of your table and it provides a, a safe surface to do carving and then also for rolling out the ink. We also need paper. So I'm in the habit now of using some paper whiteboard so it's, it's a little bit thicker than cardstock even. And I usually use A5 size. This is much larger than a normal postcard, but I cut this in half to get a piece about that size. So I get two postcards out of every one piece of the, the paper board. In the past, I've used a couple like actual postcards. These come from a packet, so they look very postcard-like. Then on the other side, it's completely blank, so I can do my printing on it. And then I need an assortment of carving knives. I have bought several sets in the last couple years. Uh, this set is much, much wider, so you get deeper carvings with that one. These ones are all fine ones, so these ones I'll be using today because I'll be doing a, a lot of smaller carvings. And then I have this guy. This is used to press the paper onto the, the inked board. And then we'll need a fresh wood block. It's pretty thin. This comes also in A5 size, so we'll only use half of that, about A6. As an example, I can show you a couple blocks that I did in the past. This is my latest postcard, and it's also a page that I used for the, the Hong Kong Animals book. You can see I just printed the middle part. You carve out what you don't want to print. And then this was the cover to my, my Penguins and Poems book. It's had some damage since then because the layer, once you print it, it, it pops off pretty easily. Uh, but this one required a lot more carving. That's why there's less black on that one. And additionally, you'll need some ink. This is the ink I've been using. It's not cheap. It's like $20 for this, but I found that you can't just use acrylic ink or anything because it, it won't print right. This goes on smooth, and that's how you get the, the nice dark blacks and smooth texture. Then I have this sheet. This is a, um, a copying sheet. So the one side has blue ink. So we will use this to transfer our image to the block. Then I have this roller. Um, this just lets you roll out the, the ink so that it's nice and smooth and flat. And then it lets you roll it onto the block the same way so that you get good consistency. And then I have this raggedy piece of plastic and I use this to put on top of the paper when I'm pushing down to make the transfer. It's because this thing stays relatively clean, um, so I can just wipe it if there's excess ink, um, and it's really smooth when you push down on it, so there's little resistance, which is nice. And finally, it's always good to have plenty of newspaper or some sort of paper that you can put down to keep your work area clean.
And finally, this is the print that I'll be making today. Um, so it's October here and I miss the autumn. So I'm going to make a, a print with a, a maple leaf, which those are common back in the US, and then a ladybug, and then the words enjoy autumn. So this print I actually designed in Photoshop. I'm in the habit of doing that because I can make it exactly A6 size, which is 105 millimeters by 148 millimeters. And I can just play with the elements and rearrange it until I get something I like. With this one though, I didn't want to draw the, the ladybug on there. So after I had printed it, I drew the ladybug by hand um, so that I could get it just the right way for me. And one thing that you should know is when you do the printing, it prints in reverse. So I usually design it in Photoshop and then do a horizontal image flip. So everything's backwards, but when it prints, uh, you can't really see through there, but it'll print forwards. So you can see the correct lettering there a little bit. Okay, the first thing that we have to do is I need to take the image and I'm going to cut off one of the edges so that I can more easily line it up with the block. Actually, what I usually do is I cut off two edges so that I can make sure I get uh, precision. So cut along the bottom line. That's why it's nice to have an image with um, a darker background. As you can see the, the print more easily there. Okay, that's pretty good. And then we take our wood block. And this block, since it has two sides and I'm doing such a, a small print, I can actually get four postcards, like whole different designs out of this block. So that's nice. So next, we'll take our transparency paper, just uh, sort of loosely line that up with the edge of the block there. And then, actually let me do it this way. And then that print goes on. Then I take a couple pieces of tape, make sure that the our, our design is pressed right up against the side there. Then I just tape that on there so it doesn't shift around. Then on the other side, make sure it's lined up nicely and tape that on there also. Okay, so now that's not going to shift around there at all. And then this part, I just, I just trace the image on there exactly how I want it. So this part is kind of slow and tedious. So I'll probably be fast forwarding at this point. And then once you think that you have the image all traced out, it's good to leave your tape attached and to just flip it over and check to make sure that you, you didn't miss any parts. Um, so that one, it looks pretty good. So I'm going to take the, the tape off the side now. And then flip the whole thing. And it seems it's all there. Okay, so here's the block that I'll be working off of. Um, all I did was trace the different elements. That's why you can only really have black and white on there, especially since I just do uh, black ink printing, so single color. Um, you can do more colors. There are, are more complex ways that you can do that. I just like to do it this way, and for my books, I would actually do the coloring in Photoshop usually. But since this is uh, going to be a postcard, what we print is what we'll get. So Now this is the part where the bench hook will come in handy. So the bench hook, I'll just attach it to the edge of the table and then put the block up here. 
and then it will allow me to to push the knives in a way that it'll keep my fingers pretty safe. Okay, so anything that you carve will end up being the same color as the paper you're using. Anything that's uncarved, well, in this case, will be black because I'm using black ink. So I like to take my my V my V shaped tool first and cut out some of the the larger objects. So in this case, that's going to be the the maple leaf. So always making sure that your block is pushed up all the way against the end of the bench hook, and then that you're pushing your knife away from you. You never want to pull the knife towards you because you can cut yourself, and you never want to have a finger in front of the knife's path because you will stab yourself, and that's happened many times. So I'm going to hold down here and put a little pressure on it, and then just let the, let the V dig in a little bit. I can already tell this isn't the sharpest tool, so that makes it much more difficult, a little more dangerous. Depending on if you're carving toward or away from the grain, uh, will change whether the knife goes in easily also. I have a little bit here on the end still. Take care of that one. Okay, that's a relatively clean cut. So I'm going to continue around the edge of the shape. I'm actually switching to one of my other V-shaped knives right now, hoping that it's a little sharper so that it'll cut a little smoother. Then after I cut pieces off, I always make sure to clear them away, keep the, the work area pretty clean. Sometimes if you're doing around objects, it can be hard to keep the knife pointed away from you. And you don't have to go super deep with the cuts. You'll notice when you do the printing that sometimes even things that are pretty shallow will give you a nice print still. You won't always get a nice cut, I can see. There's a little burr over here, so I'll usually take the, oh, that's the wrong one, the one that's just a, a little scalpel blade looking one, and cut in there to make sure it's a little cleaner. Same with here. My goal is, my goal right now is just to follow the, the blue line that goes around the outline of the maple leaf. Nice not to make really big long cuts. It's good to just sort of take it slow. Oftentimes the excess material will just get in your way anyhow. Yeah, that one I overshot a little bit, so I'm just going to alter the shape of the leaf to go along with it. It's one of the reasons I like doing wood cuts as opposed to linoleum, which is also popular. 
the the wood has a grain and it seems to have its own characteristics and I will always make mistakes at some point but the mistakes always make it a little more of an interesting look So the wood that I use is actually quite thin and it's a type of plywood. It's, it's made specifically for block printing and it's sold at art stores. And one of the things that happens with it, since it comes in different plies, if you get under one of the layers, it will easily uh, pop that layer off, which is good when you're carving. If you're removing large areas, then sometimes it'll remove more than you would like it to. So one of the reasons that I do the carving around the outside edge is because it it forms a, a barrier, a separator between the, the two areas. So I'll be able to remove the middle material without having to worry about the, the background part being affected. Sometimes it requires coming at two different angles to complete a cut. Because really making sure you don't cut yourself is a challenge sometimes. I apologize, some of the, the cuts require quite a bit of force behind the knife. So I know that the table is shaking a little bit in the video. These are super cheap knives that you can buy at most stationary stores here in Hong Kong. So it's nice because they're inexpensive, but the cheaper ones are never as sharp and they don't maintain a sharpness very long. And working with dull knives is, can be frustrating and dangerous, but you can sharpen the knives yourself too. So I do that sometimes. You have to be careful. It can be natural to try and pull a piece off when you have a piece that close. But if you do so, sometimes you'll rip off a whole chunk that you don't mean to. So it's always good to just cut that little excess off. Okay, so there is the outline of the maple leaf. So I think next I will work on the, the letters. And these are going to be, again, small and tedious. So I'll probably fast forward through a lot of this part. Now for these ones, I'm going to switch to one of the finer knives. And I like to use a combination of cutting the outline. And then I have this one, which is just very blunt shaped and it's nice for just chipping away little pieces. So with my level of technique I'll never get perfect letters. But again, 
If I wanted perfect, then I would just design something in Photoshop and print it. This, the mistakes are part of the charms. So in this instance, you have the the knife just cutting around the the blue line, the outline. Then you should know which way your grain is going. So then I just sort of pop this guy down, and he'll let me take out small chunks at a time. And because we carved out the outline first, it will stay within my cut to not affect the background. You can use a V-shape tool like I used on the outline of the, the maple leaf to do the letters also, but you're definitely going to miss out on some of the uh, some of the precision that way. Okay, so that was the first letter, the letter Y and enjoy, backwards of course. I'm just going to clean this part up a little bit by scraping it. Yeah, so there's the first letter. I'm going to just finish the rest now. Okay, so that took a while, but I finished all of the letters. I actually noticed that the, the stem here is just a kind of a straight line, and I want to just widen part of that more like an actual stem is. So I'm going to cut a little extra width and then give it some taper there so it looks a little more like an actual stem. So that leaves us with the ladybug and the inside of the maple leaf left. <clears throat> so as you can see with some of the letters, when you're working with really fine areas, it's easy for the knife to slip or for extra wood to pop off. So it'll never be perfect. And we have to make sure we do whatever we can to protect the ladybug right now, actually. So for the ladybug, I'm going to use my fine knives again and work on cutting that out properly. Okay, I can already tell that's not going to be my best ladybug, but since I'm recording the video, it's hard to get really close to the wood block like I usually do. So as you can see from the original image, we had this, and then here's the carving. Initially, I was going to 
carve out the entire leaf so the leaf will be white. You can see I only did the outside, so the leaf right now is going to be black. And I did that because it would have been too impossible to cut out the little parts of the ladybug and not have it become destroyed. So I think instead I'm going to take a detour and I'm just going to add in some, some veins for the leaf to give it a little more texture. Okay, so there is our final design. So now I'm just going to clean up my work area a little bit and then lay down some paper so that we can start the printing. Okay, we're finally to the printing portion. So I have my, my paper laid down. Make it a little bit wider. I'm going to put the bench hook back nice and cleaned up there. Then we have our print, our block here. And I'm going to be doing like 14 or so postcards to send to friends and family. So I'll choose one and you can see exactly how it covers the, the block there. Let me get rid of some of my knives and things. Okay, so now we're going to need all the materials that we didn't use in the first part. So I have my ink and little pad thing there, then the plastic sheet again, and some tissue for wiping down the plastic sheet every time. The first thing I'm going to do is squeeze out a little bit of ink onto the plate. And then take the roller. Just try and keep it in the center of the plate as much as possible. Start rolling it out from both directions. You should hear the tackiness of the the ink and you want to get a nice smooth consistency and you want it to be just really flat. Okay, once you get the ink nice and smooth and you just roll it onto the block. Since I'm going to use the other half of the block for another print in the future, I'm going to try and keep it on this half as to not make too much mess or have too much waste. And since wood shrinks and whatnot, I always make sure to roll from many different directions to make sure you cover the whole thing. And you can see all the black parts are the parts that are inked well. I still need to get this edge over here a little bit more. There we go. And you don't want to put too much ink down, especially when you're doing prints with the, you know, fine little areas like the, like the ladybug, because it might pull up with ink and then you'll lose that part. So now the way I do it, since this is cut to shape, I'll just line up the edges and then let it fall the rest of the way. And I take this guy and I push down a little bit just to get a nice seal between the ink and the paper and the block. Now this is the part where I use the piece of plastic. So I lay that down and then I start, I give it a good push and just let it slide across so that we get nice ink transfer. Because I want my print to go up to the very edge of the postcard, that's why I ink a little bit further in there. I guess in printing terms that's called the bleed. So 
So you just make sure you give it a good press all over. It's actually easier with prints that have less black because there's less problems with not getting a consistent print. The first one is usually more of a trial anyhow because the ink needs to soak into the wood block. So I don't usually expect much from this. Sometimes I'll even just use a piece of newspaper to do the first print. Okay. So then I'll peel that up. You can see I have a little bit of ink left on here. So I'll wipe that off. Otherwise, the next block we do, it'll end up on the back of the card, which we don't want because that's where we write. Okay, so then I'll just grab up on the edge, peel up a little bit, and there's our first print. So you can see when I was doing, especially the, the letters and the carving, I made some mistakes. I accidentally knocked the middle of the A out, but that's part of the, the charm of woodblock printing. You get all these happy little mistakes. So the next one will come out much smoother, I think. The blacks will be a lot flatter. And it's just because since I print on wood instead of linoleum, it really needs some time for the ink to soak up. So since I'm going to be doing like 16 of these, I'm not gonna record all of them, but I will record one more so that you can see how the, how the prints sort of improve. But then once you, once you get pretty far in, like maybe my eighth or 10th print or whatever, I might have to start using some paper towel to blot the block a little bit because ink might start pooling in the, the spots that it's not supposed to then. It's inevitable, it happens at some point. Okay, so this is our second print. So I just ink the block again. Gonna line up our sheet. I'll do it this way. Let it fall. And before it moves, get a seal on there. And then back to the plastic transfer. It's the same process that I used for all my postcards and the books that I did. So with the books, I ended up using the, the whole block because those were printed in A5 size. So it required a lot more carving, a lot more ink, but I only did like two prints of each page and then scanned into the computer after that so I could do the coloring and everything. Okay, so I'm all done pushing down on that one. So I'm going to clean my plastic sheet again before the ink dries. And then peel up the second print here. Oh, it's hard to find an edge. There we go. So there's our second one. So that's probably about how majority of the other ones will turn out. So there's the second one and then the first one beside it so you can see the difference a little bit. The ink actually seems like it's, it's a little tackier than it usually is for me. So maybe my ink is getting old. Might have to look into that in the future. But these are the, the prints that We've done today and I'm going to continue on with the other 12 or 14 or whatever so I can get a sent out to friends. If you have any questions about the process or whatever, just leave comments below and I'll, I'll try and answer to the best of my ability. Thanks.